Okay, let me show you how I made this. So funny story, the way I came up with the idea for this video was just by watching walking videos on YouTube. There's a whole community doing this sort of thing, but the basic premise is that you just hold a camera and walk around a cool environment, typically a city, and you just walk around for an hour or two and capture cool footage. And I know, some of you might say, uh, Jared, why don't you just leave your house and go walk around outside instead of looking at YouTube videos? Because I don't have cool neon streets around where I live, okay? I live in a very plain neighborhood. There's nothing really interesting around where I live. But anyway, the particular video that gave me the idea for this is just of a guy walking around a supermarket somewhere in Korea. And while I was watching it, I just kind of randomly thought to myself that it'd be pretty cool if there were drones or robots organizing the supplies on the shelves. And this is really what gave me the idea for this video. It was just by watching this that I thought of this random scenario. But the reason I bring this up is because I highly recommend watching these if you're a digital artist like me. In my experience, I think you'd be surprised by the amount of ideas you can get simply by looking at a ton of different architects and different lighting scenarios. So if you're ever out of ideas, just take a look at some of these videos and I think you'll be surprised by the amount of ideas and inspiration you can get just by watching them for a little. But anyway, let's make the drone. Whenever you're starting a new project, whether it's making a character or an environment, it's important to have references. For my references, I used a lot of images of forklifts, a few drone concepts that I found from ArtStation, as well as a few droids from the Star Wars world. One of the biggest challenges I found about designing this character was finding a good balance between machine and personality. I didn't want the robot to be too machine-like to the point to where you couldn't really connect to it as a character, but I also didn't want to give it too much personality to a point to where it felt like it was cartoony, like something out of Pixar, I don't know. But after doing a lot of thinking and a little bit research, I kind of came to realize that the Star Wars droids actually do a very good job of accomplishing what I'm talking about. If you look at R2-D2, for example, you can tell that he's definitely a machine, but there's also a certain level of playfulness inherent in his design. There's something unique about that that makes him more than just a machine, it makes him a character. But it's this balance between personality and machine that I'm trying to recapture with my own robot. Why do all my videos have something to do with Star Wars? I drew a few sketches of what I was kind of envisioning in my mind. I knew what I wanted it to look like, but I didn't know what exactly I wanted it to look like. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, in other words, I knew that there were a few main features that I definitely wanted to have on the character. Things like forklift arms, or a face, or antennas, or lights. It's just that I didn't know what the overall character was going to look like. Like, I didn't know what shape or form he was going to take. So at this point, I decided to just jump into Blender and start modeling something, and just kind of see what I can come up with. So I roughly modeled two or three versions before I finally arrived at the one that you see in the video. The first rendition was very bug-like, you know, it reminded me of like a firefly or a beetle. But this comes back to what I was talking about earlier where I felt like it was too machine-like and because of that I just felt this disconnection when looking at it, like I wouldn't be willing to follow this thing around as a character. With the second version, I felt the opposite effect, where now it felt a little too cartoony. It was very squared off, and I wasn't really happy with the way the arms were turning out. The third version, which is the final version, the one that you see in the video, is the one that I wound up going with, because I felt the most confident about it. And I think it did a better job of heading in the direction that I was originally thinking of. I remember wishing, and I still do kind of wish, that I did a little bit more of the face. I don't know, just looking at it, something about it just seems too simple. I wish I could have added a few more details details to help it stick out a little bit more. But I remember also thinking it's probably not that big of a deal, so um, at this point I just wanted to move on because I wanted to start animating. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I forgot. We gotta make warehouse assets first. So for this part, I actually did go to Costco in order to get images. Yes, I left my house. I took a ton of pictures of supplies, shelves, but store in general, like everything, just so I have a lot of images to work with. And I did all this using my phone. Once I have my images, I run back home. I didn't run home, I drove home. And I jump into Blender. I don't jump on a Blender, I, I use Blender. Why am I explaining this? Once I gathered my images, we jump back to Blender and we start building the assets based on the images that I have. I used kind of an Ian Hubert approach where he just roughly models stuff and then he slaps textures on there and somehow it just magically looks good. I kind of use that same approach with my stuff. If you look at the assets in solid view in the viewport, they're not very impressive models. You know, they're very low poly, they're very roughly made, but once you slap on the textures, they really help hide that. It's incredible. <laughs> Moral of the story, don't worry too much about modeling and let the textures do the heavy lifting. Now animation. 
Building the room itself was pretty simple. It's just a box with textures for the floor, walls, and ceiling. For details on the ceiling, I just make a giant plane, subdivide it a ton, and then apply a wireframe modifier. And all of a sudden you have those cool metal beam things that are on the top of warehouses. I don't know what they are, but they're there and they look pretty cool. The room also just looks incomplete if you don't have them. So this is another reason why it's really important to gather references whenever you're designing a scene. If you're trying to replicate the real world, how are you going to do that unless you know what it looks like? Grab pictures and use them. Anyway, I also added some really quick ceiling lamps that I just modeled really quick and stuck them up there on the ceiling. What's interesting about the lighting though is that I didn't actually use the lighting from the lamps themselves in order to light the scene. Instead, I made a few area lamps, scaled them up, and then increased their power, and that's how I'm lighting the overall scene. When it came to bringing in my assets that I made using my Costco pictures, there was one big thing that I noticed, and that is trying to avoid repetition. You know, I only have a few variations of shelves, and I'm just using an array modifier to extend them and make it look like they're giant shelves. But when I put the supplies on, you know, I only have so many different supplies. Um, when I'm also using the array modifier, one of the big challenges is trying to avoid the look of repetition. The trick to avoid this really is to just Make it big enough to where you can add enough variation. The repetition may still be there, but you can make it less noticeable by just adding enough variation. The drone is animated along a curve, similar to how I did the ships for my Star Wars video. But yeah, building and animating the scene itself was pretty straightforward. I can't really think of anything especially spectacular or interesting about the process. A lot of it is just time consuming because it's all hand animated if you don't count the curve modifier in order to make the drone move. And a lot of that is just trial and error with trying to get the robot to feel right. Like when animating him, I tried to maintain the idea that he was heavy, but that he also had the capacity to float weightlessly through space. So yeah, I rendered that out, did a little compositing, added some cool sounds, and uh, we have the final scene. If you want to see more of these little videos that I make every now and then, or just even little renders, go ahead and follow me on social media. I have an Instagram, and I also just got a Twitter, so you can go ahead and check that out if you want. But if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.